Alright. Where do we want to start from? Well, I'll start with saying hello. Uh, I can't see anything on my screen, but uh, please share this video. I think this one will work. <laughs> and then uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, and this is brought to you by Vicarious Visions. Hi, Drew. Hey. If you believe it, we're having more technical difficulties. Really? But it's working. We can get down. Nice. There I am. So we can get down. What's going on on around town this weekend? We're gonna skip Thursday, go right to Friday. I'm gonna condense these a little bit. Mae Simpson at Wyzetta Brew Works tonight from six to nine, and she's the winner of the best new artist in City Pages Reader's Choice. The People's Brothers Band is playing at Bunkers. Uh, and that is 10 bucks. They'll be playing from 9.30 to 1. But none of that matters because you should all come here to the caboose right now. Doors are open. I start in less than an hour. So if you're considering anything else, you're a fool. You should be definitely coming here. Satsung, and I'm going to read the Satsung description again because it's nice. Satsung is a power trio creating a unique blend of soul, folk rock, and hip hop. Satsang delivers lyrics that come from and are rooted in change, growth, awareness, and imperfection. The live show is everything that the band name suggests, a gathering of people to assimilate and share their truths. The rhythms put forth by the band keep everyone on their feet, and the lyrics leave them craving active and positive change. Satsung has toured all over the country and has shared the stage with the likes of Michael Franti and Spearhead, Steel Pulse, Nako Medicine for the People, Trevor Hall, Chris Berry, Mike Love, John Wayne the Pain, Tubby Love, and many more. And Minneapolis-based Smoke and Joe is an alt-folk supergroup fronted by me, uh, with uh, basically the coolest musicians in Minneapolis. Uh, it's like a mix of uh, you know folk and '90s alternative rock. Uh, 18 plus ID required. Doors are at eight. Come on down. Tomorrow night we have Hot Pink Hangovers unplugged taping with Aaron Shecky and Deborah G in the Mission Room at the Hook. Um, be a part of an intimate live acoustic recording. Hot Pink Hangovers recording a full length album, and you can have your hoots and hollers included in the project. Doors are at seven. Uh, on Saturday, String Dingers are playing at May Slack, so there's another 420 party. A Minneapolis bluegrass jam country band String Dingers will be bringing their brand of string music for the evening. With their ability to bend genres and minds, it will, it will be a show you won't want to miss. However, you might miss it if you're coming down to Mankato to hang out with me, playing with Dead Larry and Irie Mines for a 420 party at Red Rocks in Mankato. Not to be confused with the real Red Rocks in Colorado. This is Red Rocks Mankato. Um, you all know Dead Larry very well, um, but Irie Mines is a uh, pop reggae four-piece out of Mankato, Minnesota. Doors are at 9, music is at 9, so everything, ha everything happens at 9. It's 21 plus. And next week, woo! It's a flash! Uh, ne next week, uh, we are doing our very first live studio audience show at the Mission Room at the Hook and Ladder. Uh, be a part of our live studio audience. Come on down. Uh, doors are at 7.30 and 8 p.m. is the show. This is Thursday, April 25th. Tickets are free. Seating is limited, so reserve your free ticket to save your spot. This episode features members of Them Cooley Boys, Barbaro, and Chicken Wire Empire. And of course, the whole reason we do this, folks, the Galactic Get Down. The Galactic Get Down Music and Camping Festival, July 18th through 20th, 2019, at Outback Ranch in Houston, Minnesota, celebrating the 50-year anniversary of the first moon landing on July 20th, 1969. 100 bucks is what the tickets cost right now. And for more information, visit www.galacticgetdown.com. Smoking Joe Season 2. Holy crap. We've done, this is our uh, 43rd episode. Uh, we're moving on to Season 2, and it begins May 16th with a special birthday episode with my wife. And the new show time is 7 to 8 p.m. We'll be broadcasting on YouTube, and we're filming it at the MTN Studios, uh, which is the public access studios in Minneapolis, and we rebroadcast. So we are Wayne's World now. We've made it. That was my whole goal was to be the new Wayne's World. Uh, so that's what we're doing, and the live studio audience every week, uh, small studio audience every week starting in season two. So for those of you diehards, come on out every Thursday and can check us out. Our first video is by the band Dead Larry's playing with Tomorrow Night in Mankato. This is I Reminds with Living Easy.
Okay. You're live. Hello! We're back and look! It's Drew McManus of Satsung. I'm share I'm sharing right now. He's sharing it so that all of his adoring fans, who I met a lot of in Fargo, oh, they really, really love you. <laughs> a lot. It's great. Um, and we've known each other for a while. True. We met in Denver, I think, was the first time. In Whoa, Denver. my remember God. Show, I, do, I the totally two remember that. The two, of, the two of you and Dead Larry, we played for each other yep. in this show. Yep. They, there was a good show going on. We had to go through a hallway into another room where, where we were. Where was. Yep. I so do remember that. I've been yeah. in that venue. Yeah, and it was just like, what oh. What was that? Uh, uh, Oh my god, it's gonna be. The other band? No, the name of the venue. I don't remember. I know Joey Porter was the guy who was playing on the oh, other side. It's gonna come to me in the middle of what we're doing. So, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play a game. We have a limited amount of time, so we're just gonna get right into it. It's called Good Eye, Bad Eye. Okay. And the right. object of this game is we're gonna show you some eyes. Okay. And you gotta tell us whether this is a good person or a bad person. Okay. And bad, I know it's relative, so we're gonna have some discussion, but pretty much murderers. You okay, know, that's like a good, is bad. That's a good line. Yeah. You know, people are infamous, known for bad stuff. So, yeah. we're going to try and stump you. John did all of these, so he's going to try and stump you. Okay. So, let's see it. Good eyes or bad eyes? I'm going to go bad eye, but like manipulator. You know, like he could maybe make himself seem like he was good eyes. Bad eyes, huh? Yeah, that's Ted Kaczynski. That is yep. Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, what, Montana Unabomber. Yep. So this guy bombed the Una. Yeah. <laughs> that eye. is Tanya Harding. It is. Ooh. That is bad eyes. Bad eyes. Yeah. You cheat. <laughs> you cheat. What was the name of the? How skater? outrageous! I just knew that was Tanya Harding by her yep. eyebrow and eyeballs. So far, you're winning this game. So congratulations! Whoa. You get nothing but bragging rights okay. later on. Like, see that Smoke and Joe show? 90s, and, and apparently, uh, I know my 90s you know, figure 90s skating. Your 90s figure skating. <laughs> Who is the, what was the name of the? Nancy Kerrigan. Nancy Kerrigan that got her knees broke. Yeah. Alright, look at this guy. Who's this guy? Ooh. Looks like it's a creepy head, or just an unorthodox head. But looks like sweet eyes. I'm going good eyes. Good eyes? Who we got? Oh, that is a bad guy. He's a murderer. What's yeah, that's David Berkowitz. It's David Son Berkowitz. Of Son of Sam. Son of Sam. Not a good guy. So we've been going. We're all bad right now. I kind of thought he was. Uh, what was the like seventies? Never mind. It's just gonna get us off track trying to think of all these things. <laughs> I, I was hoping you might have thought that was like a like a Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. There's would be a good little guys. person. There's a little person that was a character in a show on the seventies that like. Uh, Kind of look like a munchkin. I thought it was that character. Shane says that he went to school with this ice skater chick. Tanya Harding. Tanya Harding. Yeah. Did they play baseball together? <laughs> Funny. Baseball or break knees? Yeah. Ball. <laughs> break knees ball. Very she popular. Getting practice with a bat. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Keep rapid fire. Okay. Um. Good eyes. Look at that smile. That is that Obama? I'd be like, no. 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 Oh, oh, good eyes, though. Good eyes. You that can is, tell. That yeah, was a that's John Glenn, the first man to walk on the moon. Yep. Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong, the first was, man to walk Who's yeah. John Glenn? Why is he... He did a bunch of space stuff. Yeah, the, he did a bunch First of man to space. orbit the moon? Yes. Okay, so yeah, Neil Armstrong, first man to walk on the moon, which we are celebrating the anniversary of, July 18th through 20th, the Galactic Get Down. All right. So you got... You got ooh. Ooh. These, these past few ones have been tricky. I'm gonna go. His his left eye looks bad, but his right one looks good. I'm gonna go bad eyes. Ah, love it. What? Oh, that's Mark Murphy from Wookie Foot. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. I'll see you later tonight. You have good you have eyes. Good it's eyes. just a weird picture in your eyes. <laughs> Shh! Don't give it away, dude. Oh yeah, if someone can bring me a boombox and a trench coat, that'd be great. Yep. You'll see. You'll, You'll see. see why. Oh yeah, man, look close on that. Oh, I see what. Okay, I know. You barely see the eyes. Oh man, bad, bad eyes. Oh, that's good eyes. Oh, that's uh, the gal that got us to the moon. Yep, yep. Margaret Dude, Hamilton. Margaret Hamilton did all the all wow. the uh, all the the algorithms and the computation, I believe, the mathematics, yeah. which is cool because it's you know it's uh it's it's really 
they've seen the picture of Katie Bauman with her, like, you know, all of her processors to, like, take that picture of the black. Yes, yes, yes. Black hole, you know, it's, like, very, it's nice very, comparison, you know. Just straight up ladies, Late. bad ass ladies scientists. scientists. Yeah. Which we would be a lot less far without. Yeah. We would be pretty, we wouldn't be doing, we wouldn't be finding black holes or going to the moon, I'll tell you that no. much. <laughs> Dude, the black holes are so, so insane. I've read a lot about them recently. I knew a, a little bit, but like we just don't know that much. Now we know that they actually like are real. What a wild thing! There's so many things I don't understand. Well, that's good. At least you know that you don't. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go down that black hole <laughs> of pretending I know everything about black holes. Funny. All right. Okay. Nice. What do we got? Hmm. He looks, looks bad. like Joe Rogan, but like a little tanner. <laughs> I want to be in on this. Like a tan Joe Rogan. Welcome, Olivia Quintanilla, to the show. Our number one fan slash cello player. I'm going to go bad eyes. He looks pretty mean. George St. Pierre! Yeah. And I don't know anything about this guy. I Why love George St. Pierre. He's one of my favorite. I put that one in just for you. Why don't you Thanks, tell us about, about this guy? Uh, George St. Pierre uh, is, is an amazing uh, UFC fighter. He actually just retired pretty recently. Um, How old is he? He's retired. He's not that old, like man. 30? I think like forty something. Oh. Um, he uh, phenomenal wrestler, amazing striking. But he, uh, you know, we talk a lot in modern culture about the damage to the brain from mm -hmm. football and yeah. all of those things, man. He uh, was on the Joe Rogan podcast talking about losing time. Like he's like, I wake up, I have some coffee, and then I find myself in the shower, and then I have groceries in my fridge, and that's seven hours later. Well, at least he's being productive. Yeah, he's, that would be terrifying. So he's having like brain blackouts, but yeah. he's like getting shit done. Yeah. So I wrote a book. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, yeah, I wrote this book on black holes. And yeah, I woke up. Any of it. Yeah. Yeah, but phenomenal fighter, phenomenal fighter. Who's your favorite? My favorite yeah. of all time. Sure. If we're talking mixed martial arts, any fighter, probably Anderson Silva. If we're talking boxing, uh, that was going to be my other choice besides GSP. Yeah. Uh, Anderson Silva? Yeah. Yeah, he's my fave. Between, um, between Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, which one of guy are you more of? Uh, Bruce Lee, because he was actually yeah, I knew a student it. of my I called that. We had that conversation. I was like, I bet he's a Bruce Lee guy, because yeah. he's more of a he kicking. He's, he's an artist, yeah. yeah. Yeah, really, and I mean, yeah. Yeah. Although Jackie Chan is a comedian, which is also very difficult. Yeah, and he's an acrobat. Yeah. That's cool. A, but I thought, I thought he might be a Bruce Lee guy. He has like, much Lee more guy. like the, the yeah. zen. The spirituality of the kick. Yeah. There you go. See? You're good at this stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right, what else? How many we got? Ooh. Ooh. These are actually, this is t they're getting tougher as they go. That was on purpose. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I'm going to go good eyes. He looks like a thinker. Edward Snowden, is that who that is? Yeah, yeah very is. good guy. Yeah, he's a yeah. very good guy. Whistleblower on the... Definitely a thinker. Definitely a thinker. And I mean, Tank. Yeah, he, no, uh, um, he worked for the NSA. Yeah. And just pretty much was like, so here's how they spy on you. <laughs> and gave all the info. I recently watched the movie that they made. Have you seen the movie they made? About uh, it? No. I just, but I want to see that. Okay, so I followed the Snowden thing real carefully, and I recently just watched the movie with my wife, and it definitely gives you a more realistic picture of like. The dude had his dream woman, was living in Hawaii and being paid six figures, and like threw all of that away to tell the American people the truth about the government spying on you through your computers. I mean, as one should when they have volatile knowledge that would change the world. You know what I mean? I'm with it, man. I'm with Bullish. it. Too. I want to know. I want to know what fighters are doing steroids. I want to know what government agencies are listening to me on my phone. I want to know all of the things. Pull the veil down. Yeah. God Might. damn it. What? Hmm? Show us your bad eyes. Bad eyes or good eyes. Ooh, mm. Jeff Sessions looking motherfucking. Uh, I mean, he's old and white. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, a little, little fear. I in the feel eyes. like I don't know why, and I'm going on my gut because it would be impressive if it's true. Okay. I feel like that could be uh, one of the a legendary astronaut that's perhaps an older man now. I'm going good eyes. It's Buzz motherfucking Aldrin. Well, are we fucking you for real right now? I was. I mean, I was like, did John show you earlier? You just not only did you call it with like, because those looked like bad eyes to me. That was a trick. That I totally thought that looked like. like he looked menacing. Old, and, he, and, then, and you knew he was an astronaut. I'm I'm fairly medicated right now as well. Nice. So the fact that I just used yeah. inner 
Space. I, inner space. Travel. Time. I use mind black holes. Where are we even going now, dude? <sighs> let's I mean, go, let's let's see what's next. Let's see where my intuition goes. All right, this is our last one. All okay. right. Holy shit, that was crazy. I can't even believe that just happened. Yeah, I was really surprised when you said that. I was like, wow. I mean, I wouldn't have known that. I'm like the guy for space. Well. But good eyes, bad eyes. Looks like Hillary Clinton. If that's Hillary Clinton, I'm going bad eyes. It might be a discussion, you know? Because I don't think she's like, I don't think she maybe personally murdered anyone. But, you know, there's a lot look of... At her, you're, look at her, <laughs> her dumb face. You know? Her dumb corporate money taking face. <laughs> We thought you might have some stuff to say uh, oh, about she would be a good eye or a bad eye. You know, I mean, good eye in the sense that she was trying to forward some very, like, you know, man, there's just so much policy that should just be common sense. Like, well, I think gay people should be treated just like normal people. Like, that doesn't make you a good person to say that. That's no. fucking, that stuff shouldn't even be on the table. That yeah. should be just Well, it's just recognizing that people are equal, which yes. I think we've decided over and over and over. Yeah, again. and, you know, you can't, the thing that, that you know, that's so troubling about those kind of politicians is that they're actually doing very, very dark things and like yeah. real dark I shit. Know, I have no idea. And then they pretend to be, you know, like social justice people when they're not. They're like the darkest of the dark. I can't yeah. even imagine. I'm trying to think about it, really. It's a different world. It's a different universe. It's we all live in that. Man, so we were just having this discussion. So I'm really excited about the state of the world for this reason. That, that like... You think of all of the like super old conservative white guys that ran through the whole private school docket yeah. to get to uh, places of power. Their era is ending. I mean, just like physically, like they're just going to start dying off. What do you think of this this Buttigieg guy? Huh? The Pete uh, guy? It, yeah. What do you think? Of I him? haven't listened to enough of his stuff, man. I'm a Bernie guy he, all the way. He, ah, yeah. Wanted, that was the question wanted, that Tim Kingstrom had for you. Tim Kingstrom? Yeah. He's right. got to play saxophone. Oh, okay. Like me, he will hear later. He's like, he's like, Drew a Bernie guy. I'm, I'm like, a Bernie guy, and here's I think why. So. Here's I'm why. Because I think uh, there's some things to me that are not political beliefs that are just like the fact that they have to be in the political arena pisses me off. Healthcare should be free because we're the most developed nation on the entire planet of Earth, um, and we have some of the best medical technology on the planet. And yeah, I mean, it, the it amount exists. of money, yeah. And when people are like, well, who are you going to pay for this? You want free education and free health care. It's like, yeah, dude, because investing in, you know, smart, healthy people is way dumber than investing in wars and foreign occupations. Or, you know, what we could do is just make guys like Jeff Bezos pay their taxes. That would be sweet. <laughs> because if, if, if guys that are making, you know, $11 billion had to pay the same 20% in taxes that I just sent into the IRS yeah. uh, days before leaving for tour... It's hard to believe. You know? Everyone, it's like Oprah. It's but, hard to believe. But uh, cat scans. You get health care. You, you get, get health care. And you're getting a doctor. You know, I don't mind the idea of like having like a standard like human health care minimum. And, you know, and, if, and if you have a bunch of money, you want to go to a fancy spot, like, yep. you can pay for it. Yep. You know what I mean? That's fine to me. I mean, people love VIP everything. Well, here's a crazy you know I mean? thing. So uh, at, as, uh, as a martial artist, we like see a lot of common injuries. ACLs get torn, grappling, mm -hmm. and things like that. If you take insurance out of the picture, if you were to privately pay to have your uh, MC, or ACL repaired here in the States, for the same price it would cost to just get the surgery, you could go to Spain, stay in a villa in Barcelona, get the surgery, and do all of your rehab there, and pay for your room and board. I read an article about that. And do they do still siesta there? They st Yeah, dude, you're siesta and you're eating I siesta, very I recognize the siesta as a, as a valuable part of your day. Siesta, cat nap? Yeah. It's like, well, that was the first part. Take a little nap. Yep. Wake up, ready for the nighttime. That's right. And you go party. That's right. All right, so we'll 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 call that that you won. You won that pretty hard. I felt pretty good about it. I think you get extra, probably best of points for naming that that those creepy <laughs> eyes were an astronaut. Buzz Aldrin. Buzz I Aldrin. Could, I could see the space in his eyes. It's like he that he guy's had seen been, some some space. He had been to places I haven't. Yeah. Yeah. At least a couple. All right, so we're going to watch this video of Home, and it just came out. Yep. Uh, anything you want to talk about, the video? Uh, no, it shows in the amazing place that I live, which is Red Lodge, Montana, in the heart of the Beartooth Mountains, which are the tallest peaks of Montana. And I'm so proud uh, of that place and that I get to call it home. And, yeah, and it's like uh, a, it's a, definitely an escape. I yeah. Feel like, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, I live in a Norman Rockwell card.
Nice. Um, with an amazing family. So this is about that. So yeah, this is Home by Satsun. New video. With the river, I slowed down just like me. We made it down from the mountain. I'm going home. Now I'm going home. No, it ain't easy, but it's time to go. Bags up packed, I hit the hell of the road. Hard times ahead in a constant sacrifice. Dharma, she calls, so I made her my wife. My purpose is worthless. If it's without service, the people. Deserve it, so I must go serve it up every night, keeping you on my mind. Support structure of this love that binds everything around me, spirits surrounding everything we build will be marked with resounding sounds of commitment and promise and truth, not a rule. Uh, I'm all from here to the Joe Show. Smoking Joe Show here Smoking with Joe Show. Drew of Satsung, an old dear friend of mine. We're finally getting together playing some shows. Yes, sir. Since then, it's cool. I'm excited that it's at this point that I have the band kind of ready to go at Smoking Joe. But we're going to talk about you. Okay. We already talked about the video, so there's a there's a promo slide here. You know what's happening? There it is. Culture. That's the new album. It is the new album. I saw that flying off the shelf last night, so that's good. I hope so. Yeah, I listened to it. It's a little more intense than the other stuff, but still has, I mean, it's still you. Yeah. You know, it's like you didn't just, like, change completely. Yeah. But do you feel like you were more upset when you were recording this No, album? I didn't mean to be, man. You know, I guess shit, you know, it's just... Maybe a, upset's the wrong word. Yeah. Um, I felt, you know, I had written those, the first three songs around the same time. I was just kind of helping me process some of the things that I was seeing on the news. Um, so it would be kind of processing the times and it just made sense to put them all in a row. And then it's like, once you get past those few songs, yeah. the record's like about family and travel and... There's um, one song that literally sounds like a, like a grunge tune. 
Yeah, the, the, the love that. song. Yeah, that, you know, because for me, like, you know, to, to not adhering to any genre is something I'm super into. Yep, same so, same. To, so to hear it go from, like, you know... Hip-hoppy. Hip-hoppy and reggae, you know, and then, like, soul lyrics, and then it's like, oh, this is a grunge song. That's yep. great. I can't even remember the name of that song. Me and You. Me and You. I love that. Nice. Uh, you got a bunch of touring. <sighs> yeah. Anything in particular you're super stoked about? Anything, you know... Yeah, you know, we have all of these club dates. Um... Here in the Midwest, East Coast, and then it's festival season. Mm -hmm. Festival season has a lot less pressure to it. Yeah. Um, we get to fly a lot of places instead of drive really far. That's cool. Um, you know, yeah, it's a different thing. You drive in, or you fly in, and then you either rent a car, they just pick you up, and everyone takes you where you're supposed to be. Everything's all set for you. You just show up and play. I really like that. You backline everything. Yes, and I'm only gone from home for like four and five days at a time. And Drew like, was just showing me a video of your son. son yeah, my son one. Malachi. Malachi's one. Yep. He's and he making can, animal noises. Making animal noises. It's incredible. Very smart. So, yep. so yeah, your wife is wonderful. Son's yep. wonderful. So yep. you want to go home. Yeah, I love being home. I have four kids and um, an awesome wife and I live in a beautiful place and yeah, I love being home. The only thing that literally can keep me away from home is music. Music. Well, I mean, at the same time, like, I would say a lot of musicians, you know, feel like they have to give that up in order to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've never believed that to be true. No, you just got to find down-ass chick. Yeah. Just like... And just get them in on it right away and be like, here's how, here's what's happening. Yep. I did that with my wife and, you know, and she very much understood it, like, but there was no, there was no beating around the bush. Like, I'm going to be gone. Yeah. I want to miss some birthdays. I want to miss some births. Yeah. Period. Yeah. It's, it's a crazy life, man. But we make it work. Yeah. We make it work. And going east, west. You're going all over. You're going to. Are you so going we out just of the did the west coast. We did the Pacific Northwest, west coast, southwest, and Boulder, Colorado on the last tour. Nice. And then we took a few weeks off, and now we're doing Midwest, East Coast, and then Lower Midwest on the way back, and then the tour ends in Denver. So you've been to East Coast a lot. We went once with Franti a few years ago, once by ourselves, this time last year, so this is our second time going out there. Do you have a favorite, is there like favorite foods out there that you can't get anywhere else? Have you noticed? Because I'm curious, I haven't spent that much time out there. Not specific to the East Coast. Um, I mean, lobster rolls are kind of cool. Yeah, because you, yeah, the, the north Northeastern seafood, I think, would be cool. Yeah, I'm a big ramen and taco guy, and, uh, you know, I claim Chicago because uh, I lived there for a nice chunk of time, but the tacos in Chicago, better than anywhere on the planet, better than Arizona, better than I don't than know, Southern man, California, really? Man. Fuck yeah. Tacos bro. in Chicago? West side. You gotta go to the west side. West side? Yeah. You'll know, dude, because you'll, you'll quickly realize yeah. that... Because I've had some pretty good tacos in a lot of different places. Yeah, I think the key is that your safety should be in question if you're looking for good tacos. I think that's how you know you're typically getting yeah. to the right place. It's like, I feel a little scared, but also excited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's good. You feel out of place at the restaurant. Do you make your own food a lot? I am a. It's right up there with music, dude. Nice. I love cooking, yeah. And not only is it like it's a it's a very cathartic thing, you know, and it, it makes you feel very productive, but it also saves so much money. Yeah. You know, I was <laughs> yeah. just talking to somebody that doesn't cook ever, and I was just like, that's crazy. Just fucking sixty dollars a day to yeah. eat food. That's no insane. Way. You know, just because they don't know how to properly chop up vegetables. Either. I know. You know, I wish I would have. My my oldest stepson is graduating. Uh, from high school this year. Oh damn! I know. So you got a full range. Yeah, totally. Of yep. children. Uh, Young and, and he's taken some some kick some cooking classes, but I never showed him that much, and it's something I regret. I want to make sure that my other kids, that I that I showed them that. That's an important thing, because some kids just never learn. Their parents are just like, "Nah, dude, I got it." Right. And I have a tendency to do that because I'm just like, "Nah, I want it to taste good. Nobody touch it." Yeah, but I mean, that's I don't know. I feel like you can still. You still got time. You know, yeah. You can yep. see what works and change it up as you go. I guess. What else do you want to talk about? What's going on with you, man? Is there anything you want to tell the Smoke and Joe viewing public? Anything my coming back. up? Or? My back hurts. Your too. back hurts. Yeah, he pulled it. He's an old man. I totally. I don't know. Yeah, I woke up and my back's been hurting real bad for the past couple of days. But I Did you rub I'm... grease and salt on it? <laughs> Did you love that? Then, no, I got a... Uh, we're toying with some different medicine combinations to make it swing. When I play music, it doesn't hurt at all. Last night, it didn't bug me at all. It wasn't until yeah, I got off stage. Like and then I was like, oh, yeah. that's." Fine. Are you doing the, the same set as last night? Or is it you mixing it up at all? No, it'll be the same. It'll be the same? It's cool. It's good. I didn't watch all of it. I was 
Mingling obviously in transit yeah. a lot. But there's there's some moments, really intense moments with the crowd, dude. They're ready to sing with you. It's really cool to see. Yeah, that's cool. You know? It makes me really happy that yeah. they do that. It's fun to see you so confident in front of, you know what I mean? It's cool. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can kind of tell. Thanks. Yeah, I just kind of feel like I just kind of stepped into it the last year. Being a frontman, it's a, it's a challenge thing. I'm just starting to get into it with the Smoke and Joe thing. And, yeah. and last night, like, I got more attention than I've gotten in a while just yeah. from people. Yeah. You know? And that was cool. Yeah, you, know? you gotta own That's it, That's the frontman thing. Because I play congas and percussion with Max Graham. No one talks to me after those shows. Yep. Yeah. They're not like, oh, nice congas, bro. Or, hey, those bongos. Yeah, nice Sweet. bongos, Nice jazz, bongos, man. dude. You know, so like, but then he has bass player and dead Larry. You get some attention, but you're also the bass player, not in the middle. Yep. But now I'm in the, I'm the guy. Yep. You know, so like, I'm pretty you excited like about that. I do like it. I'm excited like it. to get here. I'm excited. To, I like to stare people in the face. Yeah. I'm getting, trying to get better at that. For a long yeah, time, I closed my eyes. That's my fave, um, fave at festivals, too. Do you find the one dude that you can tell is like, e barely hanging on, oh God. And you just stare him right in his face. Take him to 11. Take him to 11. So, new album, new tour, new merch. New merch. You got it going. Try it. You got not, that same culture. You can uh, let's do it online. You can purchase it online. You can buy it here at the show. Yep. Come to the show tonight if you're in Minneapolis. I There's think no reason not be... to. Look at us. We're so ready. We're ready, ready to rock. And, uh, you know, I mean, and this, I know this was a very short show for everyone, but, uh, but it's a pleasure to have you here, man. I do have an old interview with you. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. I, I edited some of it, I and I got you. over, I got overwhelmed. In John, the, I want to see that one, the one we did at the coffee shop. I want to watch that again. Yeah. Yeah. Send I'll it to you, please. Yeah. I'll send you mine, too, because I started to edit, like, what I, you're saying. I actually just watched it recently, and it's cool because you've come so far. <clears> I know, yeah, yeah, I'd love to see it. Oh, man. Yep, good things. Yeah, I tried to edit like what you were saying and then like get pictures and video, and then I got overwhelmed and I stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I waited too long, and now it's like I feel like you gotta wait a little bit longer, and then it'll be nostalgic. Yes, exactly. Yep. So it's all about timing, everyone. Anyway, thanks, Drew. Come yeah. down, see Sad Song today. If you don't, Madison tomorrow. Yep. Yep. And then onward east. And then to the east coast. Uh, so yeah, I guess unless you got any other words of wisdom. Take care of each other. Go see live music. Support local art. Yeah, and every twenty dollars you spend at merch sends the band police. fifty miles down the road. Yes. Um, let's see. Glad to get down. Make sure to come check us out this July. I, I normally read all the artists, but I'm not going to do that right now. I will do that next week. I promise. Got yeah, Cass coming. Yeah, Cass is coming. And Reed, and Cass is super stoked. I'm helping him get some shows in the Midwest. Good. You know, very down to earth. Really cool guy. I'm excited. Really to have my faves. Yeah. And uh, you know, and we've got a good mix. You know, there's a little bit, a little bit of medicine, a little bit of funk, a little bit of rock, and some ska. You know, some punk Zach rock. Zach Deputy, we have the same agent as Zach. Yep. Yeah. Zach is, and Zach's a sweetheart. We, he, he spent some time in Minnesota at the end of like 2008, 2009. He has uh, Tito has a story that he once saw him eat a hundred chicken wings. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely he definitely is a very one of a kind. He's staying all weekend. He's doing two sets. He's gonna eat two hundred chicken. Yeah, two hundred chicken wings. It's <laughs> on the rider. And next week we are live at the Mission Room at Hook and Ladder. Please come. That hang shirt out with is me. what's up. That's my wedding. That's my wedding picture. That's my wedding undershirt. I love it. I was just like, usually with the show, I like to go to the point of ridiculous with my faces, like with the weird face, and then like this. Like yeah, this. yeah, yeah. So you see that picture, you look at me, you're like, that's not that guy. Yeah. You are not. You are not him. You look like, like you play lead guitar in a metal band. Yeah, like, I should, like I'm just waiting for Motley Crue to call me up. Yeah. Did you see that movie? Yeah, it was good. The Dirt? Yeah. It was by Motley Crue and for Motley Crue. Yeah, the acting wasn't excellent. But I liked the, I mean, it was the edit about cool as stories. stories as it gets, yep. you know? So come and see us next week. Thanks, Drew. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go get set up and get on stage here really shortly, so turn off your device and come down here. Come say hi. I'll give you a hug. Drew will sign your purse. That happened. I know, last night, yeah. Anyway, thank you all so much, and I will play us out. Because I'm with you Through thick and thin Whatever trouble you are in I don't care whatever you do Just know that I love you Oh, oh. oh I love you You know, sometimes you got trouble, so many troubles, they're getting you down, but you don't have to worry, 
about your troubles no more cause well, I'll always be around cause I'm with you through thick and thin whatever trouble you are in I don't care whatever you do just know that I love you a world I love you.